And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. You ever hear of Mayday Games? If you haven't, you should. They're not so much about games as they're about game parts. They come with these, they make these plastic clear covers for very inexpensive price that fit all different sizes for games. They even sell different uh, wooden pieces that can really uh, jazz up your Agricola game or other games that you can just buy the pieces for. So check them out. Mayday Games is really fantastic when it comes to that. But Mayday Games actually has come out with a game now, and that game is Space Junkyard. Well, I like space games. Let's see what we think of this one. Space Junkyard is about flying a spaceship around, well, in a junkyard. You have this really thick, pretty cool plastic ship that you will be flying around on your turn, and there are different wooden components. We have some of this ore here. We have yellow energy, and of course there's some neat wooden components I wouldn't expect anything less from Mayfair than these components here. And you can see each of the three components that are used in the course of the game. Each player starts with one tile. This is your starting spaceship. Now you can see up here in the corner this yellow symbol. That means every turn at the beginning of your turn you will get one yellow energy. Uh, other tiles as you the game progresses and you increase your spaceship size you may get other tiles that will give you other resources. Uh, they're, they're rare. There isn't very many of those in the course of a game, but here's one for example. One in the upper corner gives you a blue resource. Each of these spaceship tiles also allows you to store resources. See this one here? Allows you to store two red, two yellow, and two blue. This one here allows you to store two more blue. Then, down in the corner, there's nothing in the corner of your starting one, but this one here, when you take this, you can either take this resource, this ship module, and add it to your spaceship somehow, or you can immediately trash it and take one red, one yellow, and two blues. And then a few spaceships have a converter module on them, like this one here, which allows you to convert yellow into blue. So that's basically what the symbols on the modules mean. However, the more important symbols in the modules are these lines here. When I attach a module to a ship, let's say I want to take this module and add it to my ship, I need to pay a yellow and a red. Let's say later on then I want to add this module to this ship. Here I would have to pay two blues, a red, and two yellows. So as you can see, if you want to make your spaceship bigger, and you do, you want to add as you want to get as many resources as you can. Gameplay is very simple. On your turn, first you get your resources and convert them if you have the converting mechanics. Then you can move your spaceship up to three spaces. And if you want, you can even move it more than that, but you have to pay an energy for each extra space you move. As you move, you can take either two of these asteroids, which give you the resources shown. For example, if I took these two, I'd get two blue and two yellow. Or you can take one module and you can recycle it for the resources I mentioned earlier, or pay the resources and attach it to your ship. Once you're done with that, you take a tile from the box and you will put it at the edge of the board and you'll push the tiles in a line. If it happens to push a tile off the board, like this, then the tile that you pushed off the board is gone from the game. At some point, a black hole will appear. You'll put that in the middle. And it's a whole lot less exciting than it sounds. It pulls some of the tiles towards it, but it doesn't cause the ships to blow up or any other real danger to the game. You continue going until all the tiles that are in the box have been put on the board. At that point, everyone gets one final turn. Then we score. Each module piece that you get, well, not every piece, but most of the pieces have a point scoring on them from one to four. Those points are how many points you'll score at the end of the game if you've connected every side of that tile. So say for example here this two tile, all four sides are connected so you're going to get two points for that. This one tile, it's connected on its one side so you get one point for that. This tile is not, so you lose one if it's not, which brings it to zero. Here's a three, also losing one because it's not connected on all sides. And then it also loses an additional point for each side not connected. So it loses one for not being connected, and then it loses another one for not being connected on this side, so that it's only worth one point. This one is not connected on all sides, so it's worth nothing. This two is connected on all sides, so it's worth two. This two is connected on one side, but not the other, so it loses one point for not being connected, and one point for this open connection, so it's worth nothing. You add up all the points, whoever has the most points is the winner. 
The theme fits perfectly. You're flying around in a junkyard, collecting junk, building your spaceship. It's a strategic game. Every module you're looking at and thinking, okay, how does this module fit my ship? Do I have the resources? I'm looking at the open ends. Will I get the resources for those? Is it better for me to just trash this module and use it? Uh, what does this module give me? Does it give me more resources? Does it allow me to store more resources? Does it allow me to convert resources? So there's a lot of strategy in that. Most of the time you can find the modules you want and you're trying to beat out your opponents. It's usually better to grab a module than asteroids, although asteroids are a quick get resources when you need them. And you'll find as the game goes by that there's always one resource you're having a hard time getting. Usually not yellow, uh, but the, uh, the blue or the red, one of those two, so you'll seem like you'll have problems getting. And in the beginning it's best to grab resource creating tiles and then at the end maybe go for points. But you know, each game plays out differently. So I, I like the game for that. It has neat components, it has a good theme, the theme matches, and I think many people will enjoy this game. However, my biggest caveat with this game is this, it's not exciting. I know it's not meant to be, There's, I mean, I'm not saying there has to be combat, but there was really no whoa to the game. It just move around, pick up some tiles, build your spaceship, move around, pick up some tiles, build your spaceship, yay, and, and we're done. And so for people who like a peaceful, pleasant type gaming experience, they're going to enjoy this. But don't go into this expecting anything other than the name, which is Space Junkyard. You're going around and collecting up trash. So for me, that brought my liking of the game down somewhat. I thought it was good, well produced, and it works. It's just, there's no tension really for me. Uh, the black hole and there's a wormhole and uh, stuff, but it just doesn't really do much more than, hmm, what will I do on my turn? Some people like that, and I understand that, and I'll play it occasionally. I enjoy this kind of a game, but it, I just didn't find it great for that reason. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.